I've been here now for the last three months. Okay. Uh, before coming to Southern Africa, I have worked in Geneva as the operation coordinator for Africa, okay. uh, covering mainly the Lake Chad region, so the Nigeria, Niger, Cameroon, Chad, what we call the Boko Haram crisis. Yeah. Before that, I worked in the Middle East, in Gaza, in Afghanistan, in, in many other places in the world. Uh, it's the 19th edition of the annual seminar on the implementation of international humanitarian law in Southern Africa. It's a great opportunity for, for policymakers, legal experts from across the region to come together and see how they can together further the implementation uh, of international humanitarian law in their own respective countries. Southern Africa is an interesting part of the world. Uh, this is my first time working here. Uh, it's a region that is full of potential where the ICRC is learning a lot, but it's also a region where the ICRC has a lot to offer. We are very present in South Africa. We've been here for a long time. Uh, if you recall, we used to visit Mr. Mandela when he was in prison. He said a lot of nice things about us in his uh, long walk to freedom. Uh, but we also are very active currently in Mozambique where we are involved in the north, in Pemba, where you have a lot of armed violence affecting the population. But we are also involved in the center where you had this long conflict that lasted for so long. And we are relieved that uh, they have signed now a peace accord uh, between the NAMO and, uh, and the government. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three important things. One, this is the 70th anniversary of the Geneva Conventions. Yeah. Uh, your auditors might want to know what is this Geneva Conventions. Mm -hmm. These are instruments of law that were signed and negotiated in the ashes of World War II, really, uh, when the world was in the darkest moments, uh, states got together and said maybe never before, mm -hmm. war has to be uh, limits of war has to be clearly delimited. So they managed to agree on a set of rules and principles that brings two important things. One is to say that you cannot fight anyhow. So people who are not fighting, women, children, civilians, they should be protected. Two, means and methods to be used in times of war also are not illimited, they should be also preserved. You cannot poison wells, you cannot uh, pillage villages, you cannot do indiscriminate attacks. Uh, that's in a nutshell. And so 70 years later, it's a very important moment for us to take stock of this, uh, of Geneva Convention, of international humanitarian law, remind the auditors, the states, uh, and all the actors, and especially those who are fighters uh, in many countries, to tell them that Geneva Convention is not just ink on paper from a bygone period. Mm. If respected, they save lives. And that uh, they are not also an imposition from the West. Mm. It's a very African as well. We are talking about the protection of civilians. We're talking about the respect uh, of the human dignity in times of war. We are talking about ensuring that people who are prisoners are treated humanely. Uh, we are talking about allowing them to have access to the Red Cross so that they can communicate with their families. It's basically a set of rules that just limits uh, and try to humanize as much as possible and, and otherwise inhumane circumstance, which is war. Mm -hmm. um, and when we believe that when these rules are respected, it also helps for the preservation of peace later on. Let me start with South Africa, uh, since we're here. Uh, we have, we are really blessed, we are very excited that in South Africa we find a true partner in everything that relates to human dignity and respect of international humanitarian law. Already we are co-hosting uh, this very important in IHL seminar. Uh, just a few weeks ago in Geneva, uh, we also co-hosted together with, the, with China and uh, Switzerland a high-level event that commemorate the 70th anniversary of Geneva Convention that brought together states from across the world to come and reaffirm once again the commitment of the relevance of international law. So really, really happy that we can have 
and we continue to can rely on South Africa uh, because South Africa has a moral voice that uh, that 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 can resonate uh, beyond the walls of South Africa and beyond Africa uh, for its history, uh, but also for what it represents today in Africa. And so we we we're glad we can count on South Africa. We are at the UN as we have a permanent uh, member status there, uh, a permanent status. Uh, observer, observer status there. Uh, likewise, in um, the African Union, yeah. and the importance of that is always to be at the table yeah. and to remind states to put people at the center of all proceedings. And this, I think, is a very important reminder, uh, you know, to 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 have constantly because the, 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 the we are living now in a very complex and complicated world uh, where armed violence exists in so many parts of the, con of the continent but also globally. These armed conflicts last too long, they create a lot of suffering and I think it's important when states get together to decide uh, we are also there to echo the voices of those who suffer from armed violence. Yeah. We have hoped, really, that by 2020, like the rest of the world and like the rest of Africa, that the guns would be silent. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we are not necessarily on target everywhere. There are some countries where we've seen some progress, others where there are still challenges. So uh, I think we still have a lot of work to do okay. to make sure that uh, peace is at the center of all discussion on, on, on the continent. Uh, we come into play at the national level with our national societies, so the South African Red Cross, the Namibian Red Cross. They work permanently in times of peace to make sure that they are an auxiliary to the government and they serve their communities. We come in as the International Committee of the Red Cross. We are mandated by international law to be active when there is a armed conflict, where there is violence. And there we come in as the guardians of the law of war, of the, of the Geneva Conventions, and we remind the parties, be they uh, governments and military, or be they rebel groups, jihadists, or whoever slings a gun, we will remind them of the importance to uphold human dignity. This is really what we do. So we protect the people and we bring in assistance to them as well. Yeah. The trends that we see now in Sub-Saharan Africa yeah. uh, is that the conflict where we have been working are what we call protracted. They last longer. Uh, they, 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 they last much, much longer. And um, they also oppose not only, not, not necessarily two military from two different countries. They tend to be internal uh, and they tend to have also different actors inside. So you're talking about uh, the military of a country fighting against a number of armed groups that constantly split and metamorphosize and, and, and so forth. So that makes humanitarian work really complex and difficult for us. Uh, but, um, but we still march on. Something else that complicates these long-lasting conflicts uh, in many parts of Africa is the external factor that exacerbate them, such as climate change. When you go to the Sahel, for example, uh, or to the Lake Chad, uh, you're talking about areas where the rain doesn't happen as often as they do. The rainy season are shorter. Uh, or when they happen, they are very sporadic. When this happens in a conflict zone already where you have displacement and people who have lost their livelihood, this compounds the problems. And, uh, and sometimes even is at the course of further uh, competition among limited, limited resources. Uh, so the challenges are there, they're numerous, uh, but we are very involved throughout the continent. We are in 28 countries in, in Africa. Uh, it's our largest operation. Uh, and we will continue to be next to the civilian population to make sure that uh, their lives are respected, but also they receive the assistance they need. Uh, what I said earlier was that Geneva Convention, these law, uh, are not an imposition on us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have started now here in South Africa to document and to create um, working methods that goes into African culture, that looks deep into African history and show that the respect of human dignity, the upholding of human dignity is something as African as pap, as African as pepper soup, <laughs> and as African as jollof rice.
As I told you, I've worked in so many countries in yeah. the world. And often when you go and meet these rebel groups and it, these jihadis right on the front line, um, you can tell them about the Geneva Conventions, mm. you know, about the articles and so forth, or you can speak to them in their own language from their own cultures to get them to uphold human dignities. Yeah. And I think that sometimes uh, we, we don't make that link often, and it is my, my, my wish to connect those dots. You know, to bring African culture back to, to the Africans and, 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 and make sure that they understand that when we respect the law of armed conflict, when we respect prisoners, when we respect women and children, we are also being very true to who we are fundamentally.